That makes me look so short. <laughs> <laughs> She had a, an Australian adventure. Uh, what kind of player does the prize get compared to the player that left North America to go play in Australia? Ooh, that's a nice question. <laughs> um, I think just someone who understands even more now just the, the definition of being a professional. Because I think that was my first time going year round. Um, so I was definitely more uh, into the details of taking care of my body after a match. Uh, watching film back, uh, asking even more questions at training, working on stuff individually. Um, not to say I wasn't doing those things before, but I think there was just a magnitude to it because I was in Australia um, and didn't necessarily know as many people before. So I had a lot more alone time to kind of do things like, all right, what can I work on 10 minutes, 30 minutes today that can make me better um, as a player for continuing my career? What did you take away from Australia besides obviously the, those details but playing in the W League uh, usually it's a lot of players from the NWSL that go there in the right. off season. Yeah. Um, what, what was your actual take from the actual games itself? Yeah, so I think the league, uh, it's, the structure is, is, is awesome. I think it's growing. I think when they're getting more players uh, from, from America and also other internationals, it's, it's raising the level. Um, and I think as you, because of me, I was coming in as a as international, you're expected to, to make a difference in the match, right? You're expected to be an impact player. So I had a little bit more responsibility in the sense of, right, aren't this an important game for our team? How can I help us get these three points? So I, I liked it. I think it challenged me. I think um, maybe in the years past, I haven't been the person that uh, that has been looked to in those situations. So that was really, that was really cool to have that pressure and how can I deal with that pressure. During that time in Australia, you got called to the English national team mm -hmm. and uh, featured for them uh, a few times. What did that mean to you? Uh, you know, we've talked before about mm -hmm. just being a, a, an English player, or being an English person growing up in America, and kind of feeling disconnected a little bit with, with England and now being called up to the English national team. How much did that mean to you? Yeah, I, wasn't, I don't know if I would say I was disconnected. I just think I have a different experience, right? Because I was born in England and then like, I grew up in America, but a lot of my family was still in England. So I do have, and then my parents are Nigerian, so I do have these three nationalities that are very important to me. Um, people always ask me, well, like, not necessarily which one I like more, but who do I feel more connected with? And I think all three of them really do make me who I am today. So um, that experience to, to put on an England kit for the first time, represent the line message is something I'll never forget. Um, I was saying earlier that I actually got the call on my birthday uh, that I was going to get invited into a camp and that was probably one of the best birthday gifts I've ever received um, and then from then September to November to, to go in my first camp and to get my first cap and to get my first goal was literally a dream come true. Um, I'm very grateful for Phil for giving me the opportunity and, and the girls for being so warm and welcoming and genuinely having this sense of happiness for me when I was getting a cap and getting the goal um, and it just confirmed that I think I was supposed to be in that situation and that was the country I was supposed to represent hopefully uh, the World Cup come this summer. Have you talked to Phil at all about that? Yeah, so Phil's, Phil's really awesome with communicating with everyone who's in, in the pool. Uh, he texts, he has like WhatsApp groups with each individual um, and he knew I was starting preseason so he sent, sent me a message on Monday just, you know, telling me to train hard and, you know, enjoy it. Um, and then he, he knows Mark, so I'm sure they're having some conversations too. But it's always nice to, to check in with a coach and have that, um, you know, that kind of personal relationship and not just, uh, he's my boss, right? Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I think he does a really good job of balancing that. Can you kind of speak to the differences in, the, in football and culture between being in Australia, being in England, and being here? Yeah, so I think, I think for me in England when I played my first year at Arsenal, from going from the so I went from college to that experience, I think I learned a lot more about the technical and tactical uh, aspects of the game. I think uh, it, made me, it made me think and maybe not realize my athleticism as much um, and tone on my skills a lot more, uh, which was awesome. I'm only going to grow with that. I think in America there's a speed of play. There's this, there's this, this mentality of you're not going to get by me by any means. And, um, I think it's, it's special and it's rare. Um, and then in Australia, I think there's a, there's this growth of the of the league. It's it's hard to say what um, what the identity is. I was only there a brief time, but I did enjoy my experience. I think what they're implementing is good, and I think if they keep getting uh, 
international players is going to grow the league, and they also have this balance of helping the the youth or the development players, you know, playing at 17, 18, with, wow. you know, with these uh, World Cup Olympians, and I think that's awesome that they're getting the opportunity to do that because they're going to grow massively. Did you get a chance to speak one-on-one -on -one with uh, Mark yet? Okay. Yeah, so I actually had a meeting with him yesterday, and he was just kind of, he's, He's very intelligent. He's very. Um, he works really hard. So he's already watched every game from last year, and he was pulling up his like, uh, what do you call it? Your his iPad, and he had all these like screenshots with his little scribbles on it, and the detail was crazy. But um, he already, you know, kind of told me what I what he thought I could work on and where he thought I was solid at. But it was so nice to hear like how much detail of each thing, and like, and I agree with everything he was saying for the most part. Um, and it'll be cool to see how, you know, he was said he was excited to help me grow. He was excited to help me help the team, you know, accomplish what, what, what we can this year. So I think everyone has been really impressed with training sessions and the detail and, and the energy. Um, and he's always saying he brings up LeBron. He wants to start making sophisticated decisions on the ball, not just doing a 30 yard switch just because it's on, you know. And I think that's something a lot of us might be hearing for the first time. And it's really, it's going to be really good for us. Sounds like you may be a little surprised by you know your first interaction with them in terms of the attention to detail. Have you ever had a coach in terms of that kind of level of detail, maybe at this level or um, the national team level as well? Yeah, so I think I think at the international level would probably be my uh, first exposure to it, um, and then having Mark now at the club level is just like supplementing that. I think Phil and Mark are uh, they both have an understanding of the game that's very very uh, intelligent, very superior, and, and I think. If I'm, if I'm ready and ready to learn, ready to work, uh, I'm going to get better from both, from both those coaches. How do you apply yourself as a leader and a mentor for this squad? I think so. I'm kind of, I kind of think anyone can learn from anybody, no matter the age and no matter uh, the position they're in. So uh, for me, I just try to be who I am. I try to be, um, you know, a good person first. That's, that's, what humanity is about and then you know football and second and for me I love you're gonna get you're gonna get my full effort every day so and I'm gonna I want to ask questions I want to understand what is x or y wants to see um and at the same time I want to be myself I want to be creative I want to um attack at people I want to provide opportunities for the team um and if someone can get something out of that for me that's awesome then I'm hopefully I'm hoping to grow but um, I don't want to sit here and label myself leader or whatever because I think I'm learning every day. Um, I do think I have a little bit more experience now of being with the club for a couple of years. Um, but yeah, I'm just going to be confident in, in myself and, 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 and this team. Do you think the Pride will surprise the rest of the league this year? Will the Pride surprise the rest of the league? I think we have our expectations. Um, um, and I think. For me, I'll, I'll keep that in-house if Mark wants to share what those expectations are, then that's, you know, we're going to support him. Um, but like I said, I think I, I think really highly of my team, the talent on this team is unreal. And I can tell you they work just as hard, if not harder. So um, if we execute, if, we, if we're consistent in the play, I'm beyond excited what we can accomplish this year. How important is this uh, preseason trip to North Carolina as a not only a barometer of where the team is at that point of, of the preseason, but also um, as a bonding experience and how far you need to go to achieve what North Carolina has been able to achieve? Yeah, it's awesome, right? Because I mean, last year, if we're, we're going to be frank, they kind of killed everyone in the league. In the league, they scored most goals for. I think they had the fewest goals against. Um, they had this confidence, this swagger about them that you weren't going to touch. You weren't going to fail. You know. Um, so I think that's awesome that one of our first preseason games is going against the defending champions. We're going to we're gonna see what we're about, you know, early on in preseason. So um, it'll be really cool to see how we adapt and how we how we come out against against a team like that. Like they, they've kept the majority of the same players and we have uh, a new staff and some new faces. Um, but regardless of the experience, we're going to learn and we're going to grow. And it's going to be something that's in our pocket to, to see where we start from, you know, now to the end of the season. You were the player rep for the Players Association last year. Uh, can you talk a little bit about like the Players Association and, and, and what you ended up having to do for that? Yeah, so for me, it's just Yale Averbush. She was, uh, she's no longer with Seattle just due to some uh, health conditions, but she uh, 
she's been working on this for a really, really long time. And she's really passionate about, about the game and growing our game. And she's a very selfless woman. So I just knew I wanted to help in any way I can. Um, and my, my role with that is just kind of, I inform the team of the decisions that have kind of been either they're going along or they have happened. So we jump on some conference calls with, with the NFL League and, and Yale kind of uh, gives us some guide points of, you know, this is what we're trying to accomplish. And for the most part, it's just a general communication. Sometimes the, the schedule is coming out and we got no idea. Uh, sometimes these games are being scheduled at so-and-so point uh, because of, like, for example, this year it's a World Cup year um, and we had no idea why they were doing such things. So it's just the conversation of, um, you know, like this year they gave us a template of, like, would you guys want the league to break at this time or this time and this time? We were able to share that with each club and, you know, teams can have a conversation with, with, uh, with the players and then the staff and that's I think that's really good I think that's awesome just to have a conversation just be involved because sometimes uh, that can go a long way with, with a group of people okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and just media you guys can exit through the lobby you don't go through the press room cool. yeah, still have some yet <laughs>